Welcome to Calvary Chapel Palm Desert Friday Night Psalms. I'm Pastor Ryan here with Pastor Andrew. And uh, our Friday evenings have been, uh, it's been a blessing going through the Psalms. It has. And uh, so we just want to welcome you and uh, give you a chance to uh, grab your Bible as we're going to be in Psalm 4 this evening. Uh, Psalm 4. And um, what a blessing this, this Psalm is. is it's really going to minister to our hearts especially the times we're in right now. and uh, These psalms are so rich uh, with all kinds of comfort and d correction, direction, and um, all through the psalms we see the character of God. And so we're going to see that tonight too, uh, God's faithfulness to give his children safety and protection. And so uh, hopefully you have your Bibles. Turn to Psalm 4, and uh, before we get into the Word, let's prepare our heart before the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening that we have. We thank you for everybody who's watching, Lord. We pray that, Lord, you would minister to our hearts tonight, that you would comfort us, Lord, that you would correct us where we need correction, give us direction, Lord. Speak to us, God, through your precious word and by your spirit. As we commit this evening to you, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Psalm 4 this evening, uh, just a little background, a little introduction on Psalm 4. Um, it's believed that Psalm 4 was actually written at the same time as Psalm 3, which we read last week. Um, just a little reminder, last week we saw where David was chased out of Jerusalem, chased away from his throne by his son Absalom, who rebelled and rose up against him. And David found himself uh, out in the wilderness again, uh, hiding in caves and seeking shelter uh, as his life was um, uh, in danger. And it was his son Absalom. And so many believe this psalm that we're going to read tonight for was written with Psalm 3, and they actually dovetail beautifully, so I could certainly see how that is the case. Um, in Psalm 4, in last week, Psalm 3, one of the things that we noticed in Psalm 3 was God's faithfulness uh, to help us when we cry out to him. And we spoke on that quite a bit last week. In tonight's Psalm, we see God's faithfulness to protect and to sanctify his children when we cry out to him. That's kind of the theme in these psalms. It's crying out to holy God uh, when we find ourselves in distress and we find ourselves in times of need, times of trouble, times of doubt, times of uncertainty. We cry out to God. And he loves to hear his children cry out to him. And so in this psalm, we'll see his protection when we cry out to him. In this beautiful psalm, we'll also see the call to God's children to be faithful. Faithful in our prayer. Faithful in our obedience to the Lord. Faithful in trusting the Lord. And so as we read this psalm tonight, we will see that it's only the Lord, only the Lord who gives us true rest, true safety, and true security. And so we're going to read Psalm 4, and then we'll go back and we'll discuss it. Cool. Psalm 4, the bold writing in your Bible may say, that's the superscription, may say, the safety of the faithful. That may be beyond my... Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, 
who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increased. I will both lie down in peace and sleep for you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. Wow. David's still finding himself in times of turmoil here, times of despair, and times of uh, uncertainty. What's going to happen next? Is my son and his army has uh, raised up an army against me? They're after me. What's going to happen next? And he starts in verse 1 when he says these words, Hear me when I call. Now, David, we know, was a man of prayer. And that is what that is. That's calling out to the Lord. It's praying and seeking God. And as I read this, I thought to myself, the question to ask ourselves is how often do we cry out? How often do we call upon the Lord? Because that's where this verse, that's where this whole chapter starts, calling upon the Lord. It's a beautiful verse. Uh, Andrew, would you like to share from this verse? Uh, yeah, you know, all throughout the book of Psalms, we see David reminding himself and speaking to, him, to himself in a sense and reminding himself to pray and seeing him do that right first thing in the morning. And, and that there is the best way to start your day, folks, is with prayer. Um, and, you know, this isn't just some kind of bland, uh, repetitious type of praying. Um, this is a passionate prayer. It's not just something bland, you know, thank you, God, and, 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 and walk out the door. Um, here we see him pouring out his heart. I mean, you can imagine what he's going through as we went through last week. I mean, not only with... Absalom, but Adonijah, I mean, his, the things that were going through his head, through his head mm -hmm. I mean, with his sins, you, you often constantly, I don't know about you, but I constantly get reminded of things I've done in my past, and, and you can see where, where else can we turn to, like Peter said, God alone, you alone have the words of truth, and he is the one who answers our prayers, Amen. and they're not going to get answered anywhere else. <laughs> so you know, I really love how he starts off the verse with hear me when I call. Right. It, set, it sets the standard. Um, you know, he, he, he also says, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. righteousness. Mm -hmm. And now there's a lot in this first verse. We're going to sit on this first verse yeah. for a little bit because there's so much here. But, O God of my righteousness. And that could, that could also be translated, O my righteous God. Um, but it has really two ways you can look at that. Uh, first is only God is righteous, which is absolutely true. And second, any righteousness that we display or appear to have is only found in him. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all about him. Yes. And David's recognizing that, that it's God who alone is righteous. Yes. You know, there's a New Testament cross-reference for this uh, in 2 Corinthians. It's one of my favorite uh, verses, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21. says, He made him who knew no sin to become sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. Um, it's the imputing, him imputing righteousness to us and taking right. Only God can do that, like Amen. you said before. Amen. It's a very dangerous thing, church, and... Uh, anyone who may be listening, um, it's a very dangerous thing when you think that you are the righteous one and mm -hmm. that you have some type of holiness in yourself or that you have some type of self-righteous uh, attitude or behavior about something that, that we have done. Right. That's a very dangerous uh, place um, to put yourself. So we see here David saying, hey, God, you are my righteous one. You are the one who is righteous. And he sees here, O oh God of my righteousness. So God has imputed righteousness upon David. David understands that. God, if you are in Christ, God has imputed righteousness unto you. Amen. Amen. 
That's mercy. That that's, is, that's big mercy. Yeah, we're going to see that later in this, actually, uh, the same verse. It says, you have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Yeah, you know, instead of, you see, you see the humility in David. Um, we know that God hears our prayer. There's plenty of scriptures that we're going to talk about later where God hears our prayer. Yeah. Um, multiple passages, even in the book of Psalms, I mean, almost all the time, you see, be attentive to the cry of my heart. Be attentive. Lend your ear down and hear me, O God. You see David constantly saying that. Mm. Um, and you see here, even though, even though he knows that, he's still humbly asking God, hear my prayer, yeah. you know, hear me, pleading with God and to, to, to hear him. And he knows he hears him. Um, Pleading, I mean, I like the part where it asks, this is something that I ask for daily. I know you ask for it daily, and we need it daily. Have mercy on me. Right. Have mercy on me. Amen. You know, mercy, when it comes down to, to it, mercy is forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Okay, that's what mercy is. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. That's right. So that's something that I, I often pray, pray for. And a lot of mercy. A lot of mercy. A lot of yeah. mercy. This, uh, this righteousness um, that he's speaking of, I want to camp on it just for a yeah. minute. Uh, because it's so important to uh, understand that when it comes to righteousness, we bring nothing to the table. Nothing. Nothing. Um, Isaiah 64, chapter 64, verse 6 and 7, reminds us of this very fact. We are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And there is no one who calls on your name, who stirs himself to take hold of you. Uh, this, is, this is the dilemma for mankind. This is the dilemma for the world that we see right now. There's nobody that's calling upon the name of the Lord. They're seeking righteousness in other means. And, True. Through other pathways, there are, there are none, folks. Yeah. Uh, scripture makes it very clear, and, and Jesus even in Matthew chapter five. That's why one of the reasons he said, "Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness." It, it should be something we desire, not our own righteousness, but as Pastor Andrew shared, the righteousness of Christ that He imputes and He gives to those who believe in Him and trust in Him is their Lord and Savior. We can't find it anywhere else. And it's so important that when we call upon holy God, we, we recognize his righteousness. And, and uh, that's what we need. That's exactly what we need. Um, we can't get past that part, though. Uh, if we can't accept that, you're going you're gonna to stumble trying to get through the rest of the psalm. Yeah. And, and also in your prayer life. And there are many who can't get past that fact that only God is righteous. They think, well, I've done this and I've done that. That should count for something. No, it doesn't. It, it really doesn't. Not the holy God. Right. It, it's all in him and what he does and his righteousness. So, uh, and, and like Ryan, Pastor Ryan said, that's key to life in general. If, you, if you're walking, in a, uh, if you're a Christian there, and this is a very key, huge part of your faith is to understand that you have nothing in, the, in yourself to offer. Right. Christ right. is the one who offered it all, and we are covered in Christ. Um, this should be, like, like David, our prayer. We should understand the second we pray, Right away, we don't have anything in ourselves to offer. We have to rely on one without blemish. We have mm -hmm. to rely on the righteous one. We Amen. have to. Amen. Because in, in ourselves, like, like uh, it says in Isaiah, filthy rags. Yeah. Um, that's, that's our righteousness right that's, there. That's our righteousness. <laughs> and there's a lot of different places and people and different... Um, group gatherings and cults and isms and religions and you name it that 
have some type of righteousness, but it's based on you. Mm -hmm. It's based on things that you do. Right. It's based on your works. Yep. It's based on, you know, how many of this you did and how many of that you did, how many places you did, how many places you went, you know, what you didn't do, what you did do. And there's a, a weighing factor where in Christ, it is finished. It is finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, uh, the second part of this verse, um, again, he, he says, You have relieved me in my distress and have mercy, have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Uh, you feeling distressed? You need relief? You can, you can plead with Holy God. Ask Him for mercy in our time of need. He's willing to give it for those who would call out to Him. But as Pastor Andrew mentioned, the mercy, um, you know, you could, you could actually tag a word, tie a word to that uh, called humility. Uh, because God, the Bible says that God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. And all through Scripture, in fact, um, in Luke 18, verse 9 to 14, there's the account there of the tax collector and the Pharisee that go to pray. And the, uh, the Pharisee, he stands out for everyone to see him pray. And what's the first thing he says? Thank you, Lord, that I'm not like this tax collector over here. Thank you that I'm so holy and righteous and I do everything I give and yeah. I do all kinds of good works. And the tax collector, on the other hand, he says, it says he, he just beat his chest and he cried out, have mercy on me, a sinner. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, I tell you that the, the tax collector, that man's prayers were heard from holy God. Because he recognized he needed that mercy. Yes. And you don't ever get, Christian, uh, if you're out there listening, you don't ever get to a place where you have attained some type of, uh, that's how you will always talk to God. Yeah. And that's how yeah. you should always talk to him. I mean, I've known, I mean, Pastor Chuck Smith, um, we see his life, we, we see <laughs> that he didn't do, he didn't do the things that we've possibly probably done at all. Right. Um, you know, the things that can be labeled bad and evil and all that stuff. But you even see his heart crying out for the same thing. Have mercy on me. Yeah. Forgive me. I mean, it's not just for the person who has done a lot of bad things and knows about them. This is for anyone who is in Christ. This is, this is a prayer that we, we should be praying daily. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, you need mercy, church? Ask God. He gives it. He gives some wonderful mercy. Um, we'll move on to verse 2. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Of course, David here is, um, you know, how long are you going to how long are you going to uh, ruin my character, <laughs> being that I'm righteous in God? How long are you going to uh, turn my glory to shame? And he's, he's speaking to the sons of men, so he's speaking to, really, the unbelievers, those who are coming against him, those who are godless. How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? Wow. Yeah. How long? You know, it's interesting, as I was reading this, David, he prayed and cried out to God before he cried out to men. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a valuable lesson in that for us, that before we proclaim anything to this generation, this world, we had better first speak with holy God. We had better first seek him before trying to you know, speak with God, before we speak out to others, in other words. That's a good lesson on to, to do it with anything. Anytime you're going to open your mouth, pray about it. <laughs> pray about right. it first. <laughs> right. you know, I wanted to read in regards to prayer, um, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Mm. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we see here in this afflicting time, we see at the last psalm when he was actually physically being chased. Right. We see this time he's being slandered and attacked and his reputation is being dragged through the mud in mm -hmm. a sense. How, how long will you, you sons of men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love worthlessness? Right. Um, you know, Proverbs talks a lot, going through the book of Proverbs, it talks a lot about slandering other people or bearing false witness. And, and that in itself causes a lot of damage. And, you know, that's something that I've been guilty of myself, and I'm sure all of us have been guilty of, maybe talking about someone in a bad way or, or, or slandering their reputation. Mm -hmm. You know, in a sense, it's just try, you're trying to, what we do is try to throw mud on someone else so that we can look cleaner, right. you know? Right. Like, you, you take all these, look how dirty you are now. Yeah. yeah I'm not yeah. that bad, in a sense. <laughs> we think <laughs> we that. See. We think that. Right. <laughs> Proverbs 25, 18 says, Like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow is a man who bears false witness against his neighbor. Mm -hmm. So we see here that that too, in bearing false witness, in slandering someone's reputation, it does, it does some damage. Mm -hmm. It does some damage. But we see here David taking it to the Lord. You know, this, uh, I was looking at some word uh, studies on, and I encourage you to do that. You know, look up what it says in the Greek or Hebrew. Check those things out. Uh, this word, word worthlessness here, how long will you love worthlessness? Uh, the Hebrew word is reek, R-E-E-K. And it means vanity. It means emptiness. Um, and I, I had to kind of chuckle to myself when I saw that. I thought, you know, we need to quit loving the things that reek. <laughs> you know? That's my first quit. thought when you said right? that. And that reeks. <laughs> that, thou reeketh. Um, don't love the things that are empty and full of vanity. And he also cries out to them. The, uh, the other word here is seeking falsehood. And that word is kazab. K-A-Z-A-B. Uh, it means uh, untruth. And also it means idle. Mm. So when you see those two things, you could really you can say, how long are you going to love and seek or chase after things that are empty and vain and idols, things that are full of falsehood and untruth? How long? How long, generation? Or how long are you going to keep seeking after these things that don't satisfy? Right. How long are you going to keep playing with? Playing with sin. Right, How long are you going right. to keep uh, going after these things that are that are just worthless? I, I'm constantly reminded of um, where God has brought me out of, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you are too. Yeah. Um, just the worthless lifestyle of living in an ungodly, idolatrous type of you know life, consumed by stuff that you think is something. But it's worthless. It's, it's worthless. It doesn't Empty. worth. It's not worth anything. Yeah. And, like you explained, it's idolatry. Yeah. Um, but we seek. We have a. We have so many different idols come in. Yeah. Very many different forms. Because the enemy is crafty. He's got quite a tackle box to, uh, to address, whatever he wants you to worship to make it look good. Yeah. So you, that you would. Uh, your heart would turn to that thing, that inanimate object, that idol, instead of turn to holy God. And essentially the plan is to harm you. Right. The plan is not to make you prosper and make you blessed and, mm -hmm. you know, because we already get from this that it's worthless. Yeah. But it might look appealing to the eye. It might look like something, you know, that your flesh desires. Um, but in the long run, it's actually damaging you. It's damaging your body, it's damaging your heart, it's damaging your eternity, possibly, um, when you carry on and continue to seek falsehood. Yeah. Trying to fill that void with anything but the Lord, um, it's, it's all vanity. So it's just, I think it was Solomon that said it's like grasping at the wind. Yeah. Try to catch some wind in your hand. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's nothing tangible there. Nothing to grab. Um, so how long? David cries out to the Lord again. 
And he's crying out to the, the people, how long are you going to seek after these things? How long are, are you going to let your hearts be wooed to ungodlessness, uh, to search after things that are apart from God? You're going to come up empty. That's just the truth. That's, the That's truth. often one of the main things. Even my, my father, he, he would always tell me, how long are you going right. to? You're 24 years old, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. wake up. You know, and this is often one of the tools that you can ask someone or you can ask yourself, how long am I going to be in this position doing right. what I'm doing? I used to ask myself that, that often. And how long? I mean, how long am I going to be here? We see David asking the ungodly that. Sometimes when I, when I was in that position as the ungodly, I would ask myself that even. Mm -hmm. you know? So we see here it working on both ends. Mm -hmm. uh, we see here David specifically speaking to the ungodly and asking them these things. Yeah. And this is, this is maybe something, this is something that I've used along my life of being, being saved and ministering to others. Uh, how long are you going to do that for? Or how long are you going to live with so-and-so? Or how long are you going to smoke that? Or how yeah. long are you going to be drinking? I mean, look, at we're 40, 50 years. I mean, and it, has it rewarded you? Has, has it paid you? I mean, has it paid you well? Mm -hmm. um, the answer is always no, because like Pastor Ryan said, Satan is a cruel taskmaster, and he does, he does not reward his, his servants well no. at all. No, It's like, again, worthless, damaging. It's like, it's like fake money. You know, mm. counterfeit money. Yeah. You could have a stack of, you could have thousands of dollars in a big old stack, but it's counterfeit. It's fake. Yeah. It looks good. Looks like you can spend it. Really, you're still broke. <laughs> you're really <laughs> you're still, still just you're broke. <laughs> it's fake. Um, it's worthless. Uh, we'll move on to uh, verse three. Uh, but no, again, it's almost kind of like David's giving a. Uh, pleading with them to come to the Lord. Yes, yeah. that's really cool. That's what I see too. But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. And the Lord will hear when I call to him. Mm -hmm. that, and that's, again, the, 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 the sanctification that God desires to do. That's what set apart means. It's sanctified. Set apart for holy God, uh, for him. Uh, but notice he says here, in this verse, the Lord has set apart for himself, that's key, for himself, him who is godly. Mm. So the sanctification, setting us apart, and what God desires to do with you, sets you apart and molds you and make you. It's, it's for him. It's for him. And, and sanctification isn't so that, that uh, our own desires will be fulfilled, it's so that the desires of holy God would be fulfilled through us. He does that through the sanctification process. In fact, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, a really cool verse, it tells us the will of God for us is our sanctification. Yeah. I mean... That's, that's the, the main goal. <laughs> sanctification. Yeah. You know, David had great wisdom, uh, of course, inspired by the Holy Spirit, uh, to know that holy God sanctifies his people for himself. That's, a, and that's what he's crying out here. Mm -hmm. Know that God is setting apart his chosen, his people. And who are those? Those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Those are his people. Yeah. And he desires for you to be his children, one of his children. Yeah. And that only happens through Jesus. That's the only, he's the only way. To be, and then to experience the sanctification process. And, uh, you know, sanctification comes in many forms. God uses many different outlets in our lives for our sanctification. Uh, one of those is marriage. Mm -hmm. um, I remember we were at a conference, uh, the pastor's conference, I think it was, and uh, ran into uh, David Gusick mm -hmm. at the conference and just started talking and we we spent some time, it was a couple other pastors, and we joined up and prayed. And he said, I just want to encourage you that, that marriage is a part of your sanctification. 
it's us serving our wives, being the, the greatest servant in our home. Mm -hmm. um, that is part of God's sanctification. Your job, God is using for your sanctification. Friendships, relationships, workplaces, uh, children, you name it, God is using for your sanctification. Mm -hmm. That molding, right? Yes. Uh, set apart and let me work on you. Yeah. And God is, is He's doing that right now. And I, more than ever right now, mm -hmm. I believe in the lives of the believers in the church. Listen, with what's going on right now, uh, I, I pray and I believe that many of you can agree with me that God has got our attention. Yes. Uh, and he de is desiring and doing some sanctifying work in our lives that needs to be done right now. I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. You know, being set apart is a... Is a that's, the, that's what we need. <laughs> that's what we need. We need to be set apart yeah. for God's work, for God's purposes. You know, He has certain things and certain act, uh, uh, tasks that he sets you apart for. He has, like you, if you have in your garage a certain tool, you have, use that tool for a certain job. And or I'm sure you can agree, maybe you're even thinking about it now, there's certain things within your own house that you know exactly where they are, mm -hmm. and they're only used for certain things, but you know where they are, and they're used for a certain purpose at a certain time at a certain season, mm -hmm. and they are used only for that. Mm -hmm. And they're non -essential, they're non essential i mean they're, they're essential stuff there's certain things that hey maybe you don't know exactly where it is that might not be as important as the things that are very important mm, yeah. the things that are very important you know where they are right. and they're used in certain times um, it says here but know that the lord god has set apart for himself those or set apart for himself him who is godly the lord for mm -hmm. here when i call i almost see David saying, you know, God has got my back. Yeah. He's going to answer me when I call. Yeah. Um, he's the one who's going to be with me. He mm -hmm. is with me. And I talk to him, and he answers me when I talk to him. Um, mm -hmm. That is a beautiful thing when you have a communication, uh, two-way communication with God, and he answers your prayers. Mm -hmm. It's the best thing ever when you know that. When you know that. Um, there are certain things that hinder prayer yeah. Um, yeah there's a for instance for, for one if you're not in Christ God is not hearing your prayers Amen. that's the number one um, for two husbands first uh, Peter 3 7 it says that to have understanding with your wife and giving honor to your wife that your prayers may not be hindered right. um, there's Matthew 6 7 that talks about using vain repetitious prayers uh, using the same prayers over and over again, thinking that you're going to be heard by saying it over and over again. So there's certain things that can hinder a person's prayer too. Yeah. We see here David had he did, he he had a connection going, and he understood that God heard his prayer. Proverbs 28:9 says that one who turns his ear away from the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Mm -hmm. We went over that last week. Proverbs 28. When we kind of push away God's word and neglect God's word, um, and then we want to pray about everything, mm -hmm. God's like, "Hey, uh, just stick to the script. Stick to the script first. Yeah. I've already said yeah. everything that you know yeah. here, and just you know, you want you want me, but you don't want none, nothing to do with my word. You want you want me to answer all your prayers, but you don't want to hear what I have to say. So there's certain things that we need to understand too that will hinder our prayer. Um, I just wanted to." To make that clear too, that David here, he was being heard. Yeah, he absolutely. was being heard, and and you can really see his, the assurance he had of that. Yeah, it, it, there was there's no doubt. And why? Because God gives us that assurance uh, by His His word. His word gives us assurance. His promises are true. Uh, some good stuff here. The Lord yeah. will hear you, child of God, when you call out to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to pray and seek him. Um, verse 4 and 5, these two kind of tie in together. Um, it's kind of got a theme here, a call to, to having faith in God. Um, so I'll read those and we'll kind of go over verse 4 and 5. Uh, 
Here's, here's one that can be a stumbling block for many. Be angry and do not sin. Meditate <coughs> within your heart on your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Uh, it's a, you know, there's a call to faith here. Yeah. Um, and obedience. Obedience to what God's word tells us. You know, what, what, do you, what, do you, what stands out when you see be angry and do not <laughs> sin? I yeah, that's the first a, time that's, I heard that, I was like, yeah. wait, so I can, I can be angry? <laughs> you know, I just had all kinds of twisted perspectives of what that scripture was saying. Yeah early on and, um, well, in other words well the NLT version of this um, it says don't sin by letting anger control you mm -hmm. don't let it overtake you to where you are acting out your sin because uh, there is a what is called a righteous indignation um, where we see the ungodly doing ungodly things to uh, believers and there could be a righteous anger there when we see what's happening in public schools and, and how children are being treated. And, of course, when it comes to a, abortion mm -hmm. um, and the murdering of the innocent, there can be a righteous indignation, a righteous anger, something that displeases God should displease us. But we don't want that to manifest itself into lashing out to where we're just in a fit of rage mm -hmm. and... Um, Again, the, the answers come back to, to calling upon the Lord and coming to Him in prayer. Yeah, be angry and just take it easy. In other words, David reminding himself, just, yeah. just yeah. be still, slow it down. You don't have to act right now. Pray about it. There's a lot of things that we go through in our daily lives where they can get you angry. Mm -hmm. You can get angry real quick. Everyone's prone to anger. Um, but it's not necessarily being angry here that's the problem. What, it's, what the problem is, is being angry and using that anger as a force to make you sin, right. a force to make you curse, lash out, bust something, right. you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, we see when, 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 when Peter sliced off the ear, <laughs> when Peter sliced, right. I mean, he was angry. He was like, oh, you can't take yeah. Jesus from me. And he Poor sliced, Malchus. He, Malchus, he <laughs> sliced his ear off. <laughs> Instead of just being angry, yeah. He took action, and you know, I mean, that was a different different part. Uh, he didn't necessarily have the spirit at that point, but you know, still, yeah, he, <laughs> he still got angry and he sliced an ear off. Right. So, I mean, in all situations in life, it says to be angry and, and do not sin. You know, and in Ephesians four twenty five, there's a cross reference. It's it's very similar. It's actually uh, quoting Psalms twenty five says, therefore, putting away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. 26 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, mm -hmm. nor give place to the evil one, to the right. devil. You know, when you're angry and you, you just cross that anger level and you do something about it in anger, right there you're giving a little foothold to the devil. Right. Uh, you're just like throwing him a rope. You're tying the rope. Right. I, I see myself tying a rope around my leg and giving the other end to the devil. Okay, man, pull me yeah. in because yeah. I'm about to do some damage. So it's, it's, yeah. it's careful that we understand that we should pray first and just calm down like David's saying, just take it easy. Yeah. Just take it easy, uh, calm down, lay your head down. There's some great wisdom here um, because, you know, be angry, do not sin, but he tells us what to do. Mm -hmm. How do we escape that? How do we, how do we remedy that so that we don't sin? How do we remedy that anger? Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Meditate on the Lord. That's what he's, that's what he's mm -hmm. pleading here. And there's a good lesson there. Meditate on the Lord and be still. Don't act out. Um, Proverbs uh, chapter 14, verse 29 says, He who is slow to wrath has great understanding. Okay, But he who is impulsive, um, in other words, triggered easily, uh, that's a word we're familiar with lately, exalts folly, foolishness. Mm -hmm. He lifts it up, makes it something that's good. Yeah. Watch me snap. Yeah. Look how tough I can be. Yeah. That's, that is not of the Lord. Yeah. We're, we're to be peaceable. In fact, we're called to be peaceable with all men. You can put out a lot of fires by just doing this. Right. 
in conversations with the family, in conversations with unbelievers, in conversations with believers, in conversations at work. I mean, you name it. There's going to be a certain situation where your temperature <laughs> starts rising up and, and you just need to stop and meditate for a second. And you need to pray and meditate within your own heart not to, not to sin in this, not to go overboard, even though my flesh wants to go overboard. Right. I'm just going to calm down and not do it and sit back. And it's always been the best thing to do, even after the fact, after an hour later or the next day, you, you know that God was with you and you know you did, you did the right thing. You know, and, and God is, you offered a sacrifice of righteousness. You did what was right. right. You did what was right before the Lord. So take time before you respond in anger. Take time, pray. Get away someplace quiet, whatever it takes. Might be your car, your closet, your garage. Take time, pray, and meditate on God. Mm -hmm. Meditate on His Word. Open up the Bible, and above all, I would say, and this is the hard part: be still and rest in Him. The being still is, is a challenge. Yeah. We want to. It's so hard to get certain things to to release things when it comes to anger, but anger wants to tear us up. It wants to blow our witness. It wants to cause us to stumble others and uh, give, give way to that wrath. And like Pastor Andrew shared out of Ephesians, give a foothold to the enemy, the mm -hmm. devil. And we don't want to do that. So, you know, stop, drop, and pray, meditate. <laughs> yeah. Be still before you respond. And yes, uh, you know, along with this, this verse 5, uh, or verse 4, verse 5 ties right in with it, it carries into it. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. This is a, David's crying, this is an altar call. He's pleading with the people mm -hmm. to turn to God. Yeah. You know? That's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. What do you think about when you see this offer up sacrifices of righteousness? Offering up sacrifices of righteousness is, uh, you know, the first thing that came to my to my mind was, stop, be still, calm down, and do what is right before God. Right. Righteous. It means that you have a right standing with God. Do what is right with, in before God. That's right. the first. And what is right before God is to come to Him. Right. What is right before God is not to not to lash out. What is right before God is just to be calm and to be still. And to know that he's got you back and he hears your prayers. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that came to my mind. That's, you know? that, that, that's exactly what I was reading on this. Uh, that's what stood out. Um, and I wrote this down. I, I said, though it can be painful and at times perhaps cost you everything, we must do what is right in the sight of holy God. And, you know, when God says through Scripture many times, uh, we see the sacrifices of, of righteousness here. We're also to offer up sacrifices of praise, sacrifices of thanksgiving. And when you see that word sacrifice in front of there, it means that we're going to have to give something up. Something is going to have to be released. Mm -hmm. That's the sacrifice, the giving of ourselves. And, you know, sometimes... That can be a painful struggle, but we must do what's right in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. and, and these things are here to help us to walk that narrow path with the Lord, to walk in His righteousness. And, and that's really the, the, one of the themes through this psalm is the righteousness of God and that righteousness being imparted to those who trust in Him. Mm -hmm. And David's given like a huge altar call here in this prayer. He's crying out, trust in the Lord. And that's essentially what we should all be pleading with, with you know, that right. we should be pleading with ourselves on a daily occasions to put our trust in the Lord. And we should be pleading right. with others in like manner. Well, um, we're told to die daily, yeah. pick up our cross, follow. It's, follow it's not easy to be to walk the Christian life. No. It's not, 
something that, okay, I'm a Christian, that's it. I don't have to sacrifice nothing. I don't have to worry about giving up anything. I can lose it whenever I want to still, and you know what? God will forgive me, you know, and I don't have to pray here. I don't have to do this here. I don't have to... So you, there's a lot of different things that we do have to... Have, there's an effort that takes place on your behalf that God will give you the strength to do, but it's not going to feel good at times to right. go into the next into the next zone or the next place or the next conversation or not to say something. There are certain things that are not going to feel good. Um, but with that, there is growth. There is. And God always is a rewarder of those, not only who diligently seek him, as his word says, but God is also one who blesses the individual when they bring those sacrifices to him. Mm. Because they're done out of obedience. I mean, I think like sacrifice of praise. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we come to church or we're listening to worship, and we could have a lot of things going on in our life at the time, and sometimes it is hard to get to that place of praise and, and prayer and worship. And it causes us to deny our feelings, because we don't walk by feeling, we walk by faith. Deny the flesh, deny the feelings, and give him praise anyway. So. The sacrifice is, it's a challenge, but through Christ and, and in Him, it certainly can be done. And it's certainly worth it. And it always is worth it. Always. We'll continue in verse 6. Uh, there are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Wow. <laughs> Again, he's, as David's proclaiming here, um, yes, there are many who say, today there are many who say, uh, who will show us any good? Who will show us, you know, where, where is God in yeah. all this? Yeah, surely he's not with you. Right. And we saw in the last verse, God is, there's no help for him in God. Right. You, nothing's going to come of that, you know. There's no, you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, so we see there that, uh, Regardless of what anybody says, it doesn't really matter because there's always going to be people that come against you and say these things about you. You know, where is God for you? Or right. there's no help in right. God for you. And, 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 and we have to constantly re remember that that's vain talk. I mean, it's, it, we should understand your place in Christ. You should understand that you are set apart. You should understand that God is for you. Cause we, those are things that are... Mm -hmm that are built in you in the sanctification process. Um, so regardless of what people s say, we know that God is for us. Amen. Yeah. There's times of uncertainty. Um, you know, as, as David was, go was going through this affliction, um, and then perhaps you are facing some, some times of affliction right now or times of uncertainty. Just remember this, that even when time we are faced with times of uncertainty, we have to be reminded there is never uncertainty with God. He is always sure. He's always true. Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm. Nothing catches God by surprise. I wrote this quote down. I wrote this. I heard this about 10 years ago. and I don't know who said it, but it always sticks out in times like this in the scripture. And the quote is, has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? Hmm. Meaning, you know, something might take us by surprise and we go, oh, I didn't think about that. God never says that. Yeah. God's never going, oh, I didn't see that coming. Oops. oops. <laughs> yeah, no oops from God. He's, he's holy, he's just, he's perfect. And again, the, the key is that you're in him not in your own flesh, not in your own, uh, what you think is righteous, in His righteousness. Be found in Him, in prayer, in meditation, in crying out to God. And then, we, and then we can pray as David prayed here. We can ask, Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. And we can pray that today, church. Mm -hmm. We can pray that today. We need that more, more than ever. We need the Lord to lift up the light of his countenance upon all peoples throughout the world more than ever, that hope can be found in the Lord, that hope can be found Amen. in Jesus. I mean, 
Lord, let your light shine upon this planet. Let your light shine in our city. Let it shine in our state, in our nation, in the world, Lord. Let your light shine and yeah. let your lift up the light of your countenance upon all people. I love that. Yes, me love too. That. Nothing better when you know that God's face is shining oh, on you. Man, <laughs> it changes everything. It, is, it does. It, you know. it changes. What else do you want? What else do you want in life? <laughs> There's such a contrast here. When David, when David proclaims this, you can see the result in verse 7 and 8. Yeah. When you have trusted, placed your trust in the Lord, when you're in His righteousness, being obedient to Him, and trusting in Him, loving Him, and, and worshiping Him, allowing Him to set you apart, sanctify you, then what comes is the result of that is in verse 7 and verse 8, where he says, You have put gladness in my heart, more than in, in the season that their grain and wine increased. I will both lie down in peace and sleep, for you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. That's, mm. that's the result. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, with what David was going through, for him to be able to say, you put gladness in my heart. Yeah. He's praising God even in the affliction. And that is, that is a supernatural work that only God can do. Yes, it is. Uh, I mean, to give you that peace, to give you the joy, to give you gladness in your heart, even in the midst of the, the, the trial, the turmoil, the struggle, whatever it is you're facing, God, God is for, he's for you. He, he's not against you. He's just waiting, perhaps, for you to turn from those vain things, those empty things, and place your trust in Him. Yeah. Even as a Christian, we, yes. we, we can be reminded tonight that our hope is found in the Lord. Nowhere else. Nowhere else, nothing else, and no one else can fill that void that our hearts desire to know what love is, to be set free, to be forgiven. And we, we wouldn't want to trade that for anything. No. The forgiveness, the cross, yes. the blood that was shed for us. I mean, he really demonstrated his love. He didn't hold back anything. Yeah. He has, gen he has truly put gladness in our hearts. And if you're a believer, you understand what, what that is. You have the joy of the Lord got the joy, joy, joy coming down in my heart. Well, <laughs> we, got, we know I got kids, you got yeah, little kids, yeah. and there's all kinds of cool little uh, songs that go along with that, but the, the lyrics behind the songs are so true, and yeah. they come straight out of Scripture. Mm -hmm. God has traded our s broken, dark, stony heart and given us, given us gladness. Mm -hmm. uh, we wake up with, wake up with joy. We have things in joy and peace and love for others that back before before God saved me, we I didn't really care too much about anything else around me. No. I definitely no. didn't have gladness in my heart. No way. And we're seeing here it says that you have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increase. In other words, it doesn't matter how much grain and wine, aka fame and money and possessions and material material stuff. All these things are worthless, and the gladness that you get from the Lord is far above any, anything that you can attain in this life when it comes to something material. That's right. Uh, there's no comparison. No, there isn't. And that only comes from the Lord, and just laying down and sleeping right. at night. Oh, yeah, the, you see the peaceful rest yeah. he's getting here. That's the result. That's, I mean, probably sleeping in a cave. Hey, which you was familiar with. Doesn't matter your situation though. If you're in Christ and you have a right standing with holy God, you could you could sleep on a riverbank, you could sleep in a cave, on a and, rock, on a rock, wherever you can find rest. And it's and it's uh, and it's the peace because we trust in him. Mm -hmm. And we're relying on him, we're being found in him. Isaiah 26:3 is a scripture many of you are familiar with. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because 
Why? He trusts in you. That's why. Mm. That's why we have the peace. That's why God gives us his peace. He gives us the gladness in our heart. Gives us the rest that we need. Even in the midst of the storm, we can still find a peaceful rest in him. In Christ. Maybe you're wondering, how do I get that peace? Maybe, hey, maybe you're going through turmoil. Maybe there's certain family issues going on or things going on with this whole virus thing that, you know, whether it be financial or, you know, just different type of types of chaos that maybe you're hearing this and you want that peace. Maybe God is speaking to you tonight. What you do is just trust in the Lord and put your trust in Him. Put your trust in the finished work of the cross that God provided. He laid down His life for us, uh, for you. And He wants to give you peace that passes all understanding. He wants to fill you with His Holy Spirit. Amen. That way you can lie down in peace wherever you are. If, if, that, if that is you and you do want to, you know what, just surrender and trust in the Lord. I want you just to repeat this prayer. After us, we don't want to close. It's okay if I close now, right? Yeah, yeah. Repeat this prayer after after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Yes. I know that there is no righteousness in me, and I bring nothing to the table. But you are the righteous one. You died on the cross for my sins. I ask, Lord, that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Save me for the day of redemption, Lord. I ask that you would forgive me of all of my sins, God, and come into my heart. Give me the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Give me the peace that only comes from you. Father, and I ask these things in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you, believing in your heart uh, that you are a child of God, and maybe you found a right standing with God, uh, tonight, if you did, you know what? Tell, tell somebody about it. Call the church office here. You can go to calvarychapelpalmdesert.com. Uh, find our number. Call the office. Let somebody know if you need a Bible. Uh, and also, we're here to pray for you uh, in these times. We are available. The office is open. Uh, Pastor Joe and myself are in the office. Andrew's available. Pastor Andrew's available. So... We love you, church. We love you, whoever's watching. And uh, we pray that you would all find the safety and the rest that's in the Lord that, that David found here. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he still gives us that safety and that rest. Amen. We love you, church. We'll see you next Friday. Psalm 5. Psalm 5. It's a read ahead, a beautiful psalm. We're going to see about guidance that God gives us. Which we really need in these days. Yes, we do. Uh, so a wonderful psalm read ahead. Uh, we love you. God bless you. And we will see you next Friday. Bye, guys. Bye.